Well, hello. As we get closer to Christmas, I'm sure you're starting to see the Amaryllis come into stores. And you know what? They are so enticing to want to buy. I love when you see the bulbs start coming in and you think of all the beautiful flowers you could get. And while yes, you can buy them sometimes potted up or sometimes they're dipped in wax and you don't have to do anything, I like to pot my own. For one, I like to use my own containers. I like to know where they're gonna fit, but I also think there's something special about putting multiple bulbs together in one container so you have this massive impact. And there's a few tips and tricks when you're planting amaryllis that can just make it have the best life it can because that's what you want. You want to have the best and biggest blooms and you want it to go well. So to start, amaryllis bulbs in general, you want to find ones that don't have soft spots that are nice and firm, but also nice, large premium bulbs because they have the beautiful flowers in them. So when you buy them, oftentimes you're just going to find them bare root like this. They're going to have some roots out the bottom. They're going to look pretty kind of boring. They don't have anything coming out of them. There's no leaves or anything. That's because these bulbs have been growing for a long time to get this nice big bulb. And years after leaves come out and flowers come out, they cut them all off. And when they're ready to sell, they cut them off, sell them, and they're in a dormant state. And so that's what we're trying to do now is wake them up. So what we have here are a couple containers I'm gonna plant them in. And these containers just have a good potting soil in them. I like to use an organic potting soil. You do not wanna use garden soil or topsoil because you want it to drain well. I love good potting soil because when it's an organic potting soil, you know there's nothing added to it. You don't need to add artificial fertilizers to amaryllis bulbs or anything. At this state, they have everything they need so they don't need to be fertilized. Instead, you just want a good draining soil that's gonna be able to retain moisture but also drain well for the bulb so it doesn't rot. So when you're planting amaryllis, the great thing about them is, unlike other plants to give a lot of space, amaryllis can be kind of tightly planted. So we can actually fit three of these big bulbs into this pot. And I always just first kind of space them out. I set them on top and look, and I'm like, okay, they're gonna just slightly touch, they're gonna fit inside the pot, it's gonna be perfect. And that's what I want. I want them to just have enough room. Amaryllis don't like to be inundated with a ton of extra soil. So they don't want just to be one single bulb in a pot like this. That's gonna mean the watering's gonna be uneven because there's gonna be so much extra soil it goes to. There's gonna be so much extra room that they're not gonna do as well. So if I was gonna plant just one bulb, I'd put it in a pot more like this size, where it would almost be maybe just an inch bigger than the bulb itself. So to start though, I wanna put three of these together and I have my soil in here. And what I'm gonna do is leave the roots and we're gonna start planting it down and make little holes or divots where you're gonna put each one. Now the thing is, Bulbs like amaryllis are really different than other bulbs that we plant outside. Outside when we plant bulbs, we're gonna plant them really deep, like maybe six inches where I live, like a daffodil bulb. Amaryllis bulbs, when you plant them in a container, they're not hardy here for outside, so you can only have them in containers. But they, on the other hand, like to have about a third of that bulb exposed once they're planted. Now that's really different than other bulbs, but that's because their root system is a lot bigger than other bulbs, so they actually need more room in the pot than to have the actual bulb down in the soil. So instead of having the bulb all the way in the soil and then having all those roots underneath, you need to actually expose some of it. That's also gonna help it just grow well. It's gonna help it so it doesn't suffocate. And that's the important part. I'm doing this on my island because it's easy to clean up because it makes a mess when you do it, but that's the fun part. I always think it's just fun this time of year to get these planted because you can just think of how in a few weeks, hopefully, they'll start growing and then all season long you can watch them. It takes a while for them to grow usually six weeks from when they're planted. So you wanna think back from Christmas, if they don't have the flower, you know, bulb, like stem coming out yet, it's gonna be at least six weeks until they flower. So backwards, you wanna plant it early to make sure that you have that flower at Christmas. So once I get them planted in here, you can see how they are kind of have that, you know, the upper third to half of the bulb is gonna be exposed. But now what I'm gonna to do to cover it slightly more and just help the flower kind of, the container look more festive for indoors I have some pieces of sheet moss, and I like to just kind of either break it up and just kind of place it around the bulbs. It finishes off the pot, but it also helps retain some moisture once we do water them, and it just makes it look clean. It makes it kind of just look more professional, and it looks nicer and festive for in the house. So I'm gonna keep putting this on, I'm gonna plant my other ones, and then we'll finish up with watering. I'm finishing up this pot of smaller ones and you can see these bobs. So this is Papio variety and it's gonna be a smaller flower, but it's a really unique flower, which is fun. So the bulbs are slightly smaller. This one is Benfica. So it has a larger bulb and it's gonna have much larger flowers. And hopefully often in the past when I get these, they have multiple flower stems, which is what I love. So once I have all of that 
moss on there to look better. I have in the past done little pebbles too. You could do little pea gravel on top or decorative gravel of some type. Whatever you wanna kind of put on top, you could put little pine cones even or things like that. Just whatever kind of fits your decor or what you have around your house. So the important thing now is watering. They don't need to be inundated with water. They're in a dormant state. So if you just keep watering them every day, they're most likely gonna rot and actually it's gonna slow down their growth process. So what I do is water them once they're planted and I keep them since they're in for them in the house. I have these trivets. I have one, it comes with the container. I love these Wakefield handmade pots. They're just absolutely gorgeous. But what's nice is the saucers are glazed so they should not bleed through. But just for added protection, I usually, I have these antique trivets I don't know, they're alabaster or marble, and I keep them around the house for things like this. So just, you know, to keep your wood surfaces, anything around the house, just kind of protected. So I water it once I get it planted. I do, like I said before, do not fertilize it. They don't need the fertilizer at this point. If you wanna worry about fertilizing and you wanna save these bulbs year to year, what I do is after the growing season, so after they bloom, sometimes they bloom really late, January, February, you know, let them go in your house in a sunny window. The leaves will come out after the flower stalks fall and the leaves will get big and they'll soak in energy. That energy is what's starting to build that flower for the next year. So keep those leaves on there. When it gets to be nice outside in spring and summer, set them outside in the sun. Just treat them like any outdoor plant, water them as they need it, let them grow all year. Come August, maybe late August, when kids go back to school, cut off the leaves and put the bulbs in a closet in somewhere dark and that's gonna simulate that time they need to be dormant before they bloom and then bring them out again late November and hopefully they bloom in December. I've done it on certain bulbs. It kind of depends. You kind of go in these ebbs and flows. Sometimes the timing gets off, but it's fun to do. This one I'm gonna keep right here in the kitchen, trivet and all right behind me so I can watch it all season long. And it likes this window. It gets nice light during the morning, some Eastern sunlight, a little bit of Southern sunlight. It's just gonna be fun to watch. The one thing you do wanna remember Heavy containers are gonna be good. So I'm using ceramic or terracotta, something heavy because the bulbs as they grow, the flower stems can be quite top heavy and get kind of a bit of weight to them. So if you have a really lightweight pot, like a plastic pot, they could fall over. You will also need to watch and most likely need to stake them as the flowers, depending on the variety, they'll get really tall. And so you'll want something that will stake them, a bamboo stake, a metal stake, something that will just keep it upright and make you happy. Cause that's the whole point. This one I'm gonna probably put on my other island. Gonna watch it grow gonna enjoy it. So what I hope you do with this is maybe go and actually plant your own amaryllis. Maybe you'll be inspired to keep them one year to the next. Maybe just this season or maybe do this and give it as a gift because that is such a great tip of it. As always, you can check my website wiseguide.com for tips, for tricks, for all my recipes, whether it's during the year or holidays, I put them all on there. Share this video because yeah, it helps me. It helps everyone see how easy this is and that's the point. So enjoy the holidays, plant something fun, be festive. Until then, I can't wait to see it.